My name is Rolinda and I'm the Director of Educational Resources and OER Specialist at UA Crosstalk. This is the time of year when we start getting a lot of questions about annotated bibliographies. So, this is what we're going to cover in this video. An annotated bibliography is a special kind of list of all the sources you're using in your research, but it includes a short summary and or analysis for each source. If this is the first time you are required to write an annotated bibliography, it may sound a little overwhelming, so let's simplify it. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines annotate as making explanatory notes or comments. With annotation, we again have the term note. So this tells us that an annotation means to make notes. A bibliography is a list of sources consulted during research. When using a works cited page in MLA or a references page in APA, the difference is that those only include works that were used in the research. A bibliography includes everything consulted, even if the source is not actually cited in the paper. So, an annotated bibliography is a list of all the sources consulted for a research project with notes for each source. An annotation is usually about a paragraph, uh, maybe one to 300 words. Check with your instructor because they might require something different. The annotation may include a short summary of the source along with its strengths and weaknesses. Many instructors ask students to explain why that source is relevant to their research. There are three basic steps to developing an annotated bibliography. First, you'll need to evaluate your sources. You can use the CRAP test to do that. We'll get to that in just a minute. The next step is to create the annotation. For that, you'll need to determine what type of annotation you're using. There are four different types. The final step is to know which writing style your instructor requires so you'll know how to format your annotated bibliography. It's easy to determine whether your sources are credible or not by using the CRAAP test. As you can see, CRAAP or C-R-A-A-P is an acronym for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. Currency refers to the timeliness of the information. For instance, when, when was the material written? It's always a good idea to check whether links on a web page are working and whether ma the material has been updated. The R in CRAAP stands for relevance. This is the part in which you have to determine if the material is relevant to your topic of research. Do you feel confident using this source as support for your argument? The first A is for authority. You have to determine what the author's credentials are and whether they seem qualified enough to write about your topic of research. Does the author have any organizational affiliations that might indicate bias? And the second A is for accuracy. Accuracy refers to your source's reliability. Is the information peer reviewed? Where's it coming from? Is it supported? What about spelling errors, typos, grammar? Obviously, a source filled with grammar problems is probably not something you'll want to use in your research. And at last, the end of crap, purpose. Purpose is about why the information is available. Is its purpose to sell something or to teach something? Does the author present an objective and unbiased view? It's always best to determine what a work's purpose really is. Now that step one is completed and the credibility of all your sources is complete, it's time to move on to step two, creating the annotation. There are about four different types of annotation, but you'll probably end up using the combination annotation. The first type is informative or summary. 
This annotation provides a summary of the source and discusses the main argument of the research. On this slide, you see an MLA example of an informative annotation. The author uses the first couple of sentences to provide a short summary and simultaneously describes the book's main focus. The second type of annotation is indicative or descriptive. The author describes the source and provides a brief summary, describes the main point, but they may include chapter points as well. In this annotation, the author explains that many essays are included in this source. Another type of annotation is evaluative. The author uses an evaluative annotation to evaluate the source and explain why it's important to the research. An MLA example is provided on this slide. The author describes what the book is and then evaluates it by providing specific details about its strengths and weaknesses. And finally, throw all three types of annotations in the mix and you have a combination annotation, which is most commonly used. A combination annotation describes, summarizes, and evaluates the source. This MLA example manages to do all three. The author explains the scope of the work, and offers a summation of the work's purpose by stating that Strong Leak shows how patriarchy can belittle the novel's female character's importance. So, by the third step, you've already evaluated your sources, you've written your annotation, so now it's time to figure out how to format your annotated bibliography. The first thing you need to do is find out which writing style your instructor requires. If it's for a social science project, it will most likely be APA style. You can refer to the ERC's APA style 7th edition library guide to learn more about APA. Remember, an annotated bibliography is the same thing as a bibliography, which you all know is a list of all the sources you consulted in your research but it goes a step further by adding annotation or notes for each source. In APA, use the same format as you would in a regular references list. The first line of citation starts at the left margin and the rest of the citation entry and the annotation will be indented half an inch from the left margin. Use the hanging indent to accomplish this. Continue to double space and make sure there aren't any extra lines between entries. Use third person and avoid first person like the plague. If you're writing a humanities paper, you're likely using MLA style. Typically, annotations consist of one paragraph that's about 150 to 200 words long. Use the same format that you would use for a work cited list. If you're including opinions in your annotation, be objective. And again, avoid the first person like the plague. The third most common writing style is Chicago style. If you're writing a paper for a history class, you're probably using Chicago style. Use the same format you'd use for a standard bibliography. Unlike APA and MLA, Chicago-style bibliographies are single-spaced with an extra line between entries. As always, avoid first person. Organizing an annotated bibliography may seem like a hassle, but there are so many benefits to creating one. The most important benefit is that you learn more about your research topic. Unlike high school, writing in college is contributing to an existing field of knowledge surrounding your topic. An annotated bibliography can help establish your main argument and develop your thesis. Learning about both sides of an issue allows you to use critical thinking skills and be informed about a topic prior to making judgments. Throughout college, you'll be writing annotated bibliographies, sometimes as a standalone assignment and sometimes as a part of a larger research project. To review, in this video, you learned what an annotated bibliography is, 
that the three steps to writing one include evaluating your source, writing the annotation, and using the correct format for your assignment. Remember to ask your instructor what they prefer. There are four different types of annotations, informative or summary, indicative or descriptive, evaluative, and the most common, combination. When we write, we usually put all the rhetorical modes together, so it's easy to understand why the combination annotation is the most popular. If you need any help organizing your annotated bibliography, contact the ERC. If you're on campus, just drop in and a tutor will be happy to help.